Hey, I made it. Look, yahoo! Meeting home and the sun is still out. Behind clouds, behind rainy clouds, but the sun is still out. For another chapter of Terry Pratchett's A Hatful of Sky, second book in the Tiffany Aiken series. So last night we left it halfway through a chapter and Tiffany was at that circle with all of those others and that mean old anagramma. <laughs> like I said, everybody has an anagramma, maybe more than one in their lives. I know a few and I'm I'm an adult. <laughs> but um yeah, we left it. Tiffany was just finding out about the trials, is what Anagramma said it, and Patchouli was gonna do the pig trick. Good. You were nearly good at that, is what Anagramma said. And then um she asked uh Tiffany, didn't she? So I'll pick it up from there. Alright. Good. You're nearly good at that said Anagramma, and pointed around the circle from one girl to another, nodding at their answers until she came to Tiffany. Soft Nellies, she said, to sniggering amusement. That was that cheese that she said yesterday. What are witch trials, said Tiffany. Miss Tick mentioned them, but I don't know what they are. Anagramma gave her one of her noisy sighs. Oh, you tell her, Petulia, she said. You brought her after all. Hesitantly, and with lots of ums and glances at Anagramma, Petulia explained that the witch trials, um, it was a time when witches from all over the mountains could meet up and, um, see old friends and, um, could pick up on the latest news and gossip. Ordinary people could come along too, and there was a fair and, um, side shows. It was quite, um, a big event, and in the afternoon, all the witches that, um, wanted to show to you could show off a spell or um something they'd been working on which was very um popular to tiffany they sounded like sheepdog trials without the dogs or the sheep they were in sheercliff this year which was quite close is there a prize she asked um oh no said petulia it's all done in spirit of fun and good fellow um good sistership ha said anagramma not even she will believe that it's all a fix anyway they'll all applaud mistress weatherwax she always wins whatever she does she just messes up people's minds she just fools them into thinking she's good she wouldn't last five minutes against a wizard they do real magic and they and she dresses like a scarecrow too it's ignorant old women like her who keep witchcraft rooted in the past and mrs earwig points that out in chapter one she being a bit mean to Mistress Weatherwax. I I don't know, Granny Weatherwax. I don't know her, but already I do know that you don't be mean to grass, to Mistress Weatherwax. Oh my goodness! Who actually, if you think about Tiffany's relationship with Mistress Weatherwax, she bowed to Tiffany, didn't she? She tipped her hat to Tiffany. So Tiffany has got respect for Mistress Weatherwax, and Anagramma is now showing disrespect to. Mistress Weatherwax. <laughs> Car crash waiting to happen. One or two of the girls looked uncertain. Petulia even looked over her shoulder. Um, people do say she's done amazing things, Anagramma, she said. And, um, they say she can spy on people miles away. Oh, yes, they say that, said Anagramma. That's because they're all frightened of her. She's such a bully, that's all she does. Bully people and mess up their heads, that's Old witchcraft, just one step away from cackling, in my opinion. She's half cracked now, they say. She didn't seem cracked to me. Who said that? snapped Anagramma. Everyone looked at Tiffany, who wished she hadn't spoken, but now there was nothing for it but to go on. She was just a bit old and stern, she said, but she was quite polite. She didn't cackle. You've met her? Yes. She spoke to you, did she? snarled Anagramma. Was that before or after you kicked out the Fairy Queen? It was just after, said Tiffany, who was not used to this sort of thing. She turned up on a broomstick. She added, I am telling the truth. Of course you are, said Anagramma, smiling grimly. And she congratulated you too, I expect. Not really, said Tiffany. She seemed pleased, but it was hard to tell. And then Tiffany said something really, really stupid. Long afterwards... And long after all sorts of things had happened, she'd go la 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 to blot out the memory whether something reminded her of that evening. She said, she did give me this hat. And all of them, with one voice, said, what hat? Whoops. 
Pachilia took her back to the cottage. She did her best and assured Tiffany that she believed her, but Tiffany knew she was just being nice. Miss Level tried to talk to her as she ran upstairs, but she bolted her door, kicked off her boots and lay down on the bed with a pillow over her head to drown out the laughter echoing outside. Downstairs there was some muffled conversation between Pachulia and Miss Level and then the sound of the door closing as Pachulia left. After a while there was a scraping noise as Tiffany's boots were dragged across the floor and arranged neatly under the bed. Oswald was never off duty. After another while the laughter died down although she was sure that it would never go completely. Tiffany could feel the hat. At least she had been able to feel it, the virtual hat on her real head. But no one could see it, and Pachulia had even waved a hand back and forth over Tiffany's head and encountered a complete absence of hat. The worst part, and it was hard to find the worst part, so humiliatingly bad had it been, was hearing Anagramma say, No, don't laugh at her, that's too cruel. She's just foolish, that's all. I told you the old woman messes with people's heads. Tiffany's first thoughts were running around in circles. Her second thoughts were caught up in the storm. Only her third thoughts, which were very weak, came up with, even though your world is completely and utterly ruined and can never be made better no matter what, and you're completely inconsolable, it would be nice if you had someone bringing some soup upstairs. Her third thoughts got Tiffany out of bed and over to the door where they guided her hand to slide the bolt back. Then they let her fling herself onto the bed again. A few minutes later, there was a creak of footsteps on the landing. It's nice to be right. Miss Level knocked, then came in after a decent pause. Tiffany heard the tray go down on the table and felt the bed move as a body sat down on it. Petulia is a capable girl, I've always thought, said Miss Level after a while. She'll make some village a very serviceable witch one day. Tiffany stayed silent. She told me all about it, said Miss Level. Miss Tick never mentioned the hat, but... If I was you, I wouldn't have told her about it anyway. Sounds the sort of thing Mistress Weatherwax would do. You know, sometimes it helps to talk about these things. More silence from Tiffany. Actually, that's not true, Miss Level added. But as a witch, I am incredibly inquisitive and would love to know more. That had no effect either. Miss Level sighed and stood up. I'll leave the soup, but if you let it get too cold, Oswald will try to take it away. She went downstairs. Nothing stirred in the room for about five minutes. Then there was faintest of tinkles as the soup began to move. Tiffany's hand shot out and gripped the tray firmly. That's the job of third thoughts. First and second thoughts might understand your current tragedy, but something has to remember that you haven't eaten since lunchtime. Afterwards, and after Oswald had speedily taken the empty bowl away, Tiffany lay in the dark, staring at nothing. The novelty of this new country had taken all of her attention away over the last few days, but now that it had drained away in the storm of laughter and homesickness rushed to fill in the empty spaces. She'd missed the sounds and the sheep and the silences of the chalk. She missed seeing the blackness of the hills from her bedroom window outlined against the stars. She missed part of herself. But they'd laughed at her. They'd said, what hat? And they'd laughed even more when she'd raised her hand to touch the invisible brim and hadn't found it. She'd touched it every day for 18 months and now it had gone. And she couldn't make a shamble. And she just had a green dress while all the other girls wore black ones. And her grandma had a lot of jewellery too in black and in silver. All the other girls had shambles too, beautiful ones. Who cared if they were just for show? Perhaps she wasn't a witch at all. Oh, she'd defeated the Queen with a little help from the little men and the memory of Granny Aiken, but she hadn't used magic. She wasn't sure now what she had used. She felt something go down through the soles of her boots, down through the hills and through the years, and come back loud and roaring in a rage that shook the sky. How dare you invade my world, my land, my life? But what had the virtual hat done for her? Perhaps the old woman had tricked her, had just made her think there was a hat there. Perhaps she was a bit cracked, like Anna Grandma had said, and had just got things wrong. Perhaps Tiffany should go home and make soft Nellies for the rest of her life. Tiffany turned round and crawled down the bed and opened her suitcase. She pulled out the rough box, opened it in the dark and closed her hand around the lucky stone. She'd hoped that there'd be some kind of spark, some kind of friendliness in it. There was none. There was just the roughness of the outside of the stone, the smoothness of the face where it split, and the sharpness between the two. And the piece of sheep's wool did nothing but make her fingers smell of sheep, and this made her long for home and feel even more upset. The silver horse was cold. 
Only someone quite close would have heard the sob. It was quite faint, but it was carried on the dark red wings of misery. She wanted, longed for the hiss of wind in the turf and the feel of centuries under her feet. She wanted that sense, which had never left her before, of being where achings had lived for thousands of years. She needed blue butterflies and the sounds of sheep and the big empty skies. Back home, when she'd felt upset, she'd gone up to the remains of the old shepherd in hut and sat there for a while. That had always worked. It was a long way away now. Too far. Now she was full of a horrible, heavy, dead feeling, and there was nowhere to leave it, and it wasn't how things were supposed to go. Where was the magic? Oh, she understood that you had to learn about the basic, everyday craft. But when did the witch part turn up? She'd been trying to learn, she really had, and she was turning into, well, a good worker, a handy girl with, po with potions and a reliable person, dependable like Miss Level. She'd expected, well, what, to be doing serious witch stuff, you know, broomsticks, magic, guarding the world against evil forces in a noble yet modest way, and then also doing good for poor people because she was really a nice person. And the people who'd seen in the picture had rather less messy ailments and their children didn't have such runny noses. Mr. Weevil's flying toenails weren't in it anywhere. Some of them boomeranged. She got sick on broomsticks every time. She couldn't even make a shamble. She was going to spend her days running round after people who, to be honest, could sometimes be doing a little bit more for themselves. No magic, no flying, no secrets, just toenails and bogeys. She belonged to the chalk. Every day she told the hills what they were. Every day they told her who she was. But now she couldn't hear them. Outside it began to rain quite hard, and in the distance Tiffany heard the mutter of thunder. What would Granny Aching have done? But even folded in the wings of despair, despair she knew the answer to that. Granny Aching never gave up. She'd search all night for that lost lamb. She lay looking at nothing for a while and then lit the candle by the bed and swivelled her legs onto the floor. This couldn't wait until morning. Tiffany had a little trick for seeing the hat. If you moved your hand behind it quickly, there was a slight brief blurriness to what you saw, as though the light coming through the invisible hat took a little more time. It had to be there. Well, the candle should give just enough light to be sure. If the hat was there, everything would be fine and it wouldn't matter what other people thought. She stood in the middle of the carpet while dan lightning danced across the mountains outside and closed her eyes. Uh-oh. Down in the garden, the apple tree branches flayed in the wind, the dream catchers and curse nets clashing and dangling. See me, she said. The world went quiet, totally silent. It hadn't done that before, but Tiffany tiptoed around until she knew she was opposite herself and opened her eyes again. And there she was, and so was the hat, as clear as it had ever been. And the image of Tiffany below, a young girl in a green dress, opened its eyes and smiled at her and said, We see you, now we are you. Tiffany tried to shout, see me not, but there was no mouth to shout. Lightning struck somewhere nearby, the window blew in, the candle flame blew out in a streamer of fire and died. And then there was only darkness and the hiss of the rain. Oh my goodness! I can't believe that just happened. I'm going to have to read it again. See me. The world went quiet, totally silent. It hadn't done that before. But Tiffany tiptoed around until she knew she was opposite herself and then opened her eyes again. And there she was, and so was the hat, as clear as it had ever been. And the image of Tiffany below, a young girl in a green dress, opened its eyes and smiled at her and said, We see you, now we are you. Tiffany tried to shout, see me not, but there was no mouth to shout. Oh, oh my goodness. That's pretty bad. I, like, how, how, how is she going to get that? Maybe another witch who can see Tiffany? I don't know. I can't wait to find out, though. Okay, come on, Tuesday night. <laughs> Even I'm excited to read it. Oh, my goodness. Okay, I'll see you all soon. Bye.